everybody! My name's Gail from the editing room. Yes, this is a voiceover because this episode's going to be a little bit different. Last time I asked you guys about your preference with me playing this game in order to try to maximize some enjoyment for you. And if you have any tips and tricks, please continue putting them down in the comments down below. I love reading them and getting some insight as to what you guys would want uh, from a pl blind playthrough like this. I was told that some of you do like the trial and error, so I didn't want to completely get rid of it, but I did want to at least be competent at the game. So the first thing I did that you'll notice is that I am just spending a couple minutes uh, looking and playing around with controls, changing some options. Um, I go in and I read a bit of the extra lore and journal entries that come up that I don't usually get to read because I'm trying to be entertaining for you guys and that involves me not just reading out loud for 10 minutes. So yeah, I actually did watch at least uh, maybe like three videos on tips and tricks uh, for beginners specifically. Um, I tried to do anything that was spoiler free so that nothing would be actually uh, given to me other than here's some ways to play the game. And one of the biggest things that I gravitated towards was the idea of not doing the combat in real time, but doing the combat in more of a tactical, uh, you know, press pause and figure out everybody's, uh, what they're going to do and then go back into, uh, combat. And I thought that perhaps maybe that would fix what was wrong, well, at least for me, because I wasn't that, well, I guess <laughs> what was wrong, I don't know why I keep failing, because if I did know, I would have fixed it by now. Um, but my first guess was probably that it was just a lot going on and I wasn't utilizing time effectively, so battles that should have been easy were actually more difficult because I was just wasting time. I've noted before that, like, watching some of the side characters, uh, they don't actually move and attack as often. Uh, sometimes they'll just like stay still because they don't know what to do. So I decided that that would be my plan and that was how I was going to go into it. Uh, a lovely commenter, uh, I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your username wrong, uh, Zarkontal, Zarkontal, I believe, uh, gave me a little bit, uh, a pretty spoiler free, but a pretty good um, guide as to the order of places I should go in order to be able to get through the fade um, and also informed me that trying to get through those wisps and do the spirit thing was not supposed to be possible. <laughs> Apparently I had been glitching through that door and that makes a lot of sense considering I couldn't figure out why how to get through that door. It was just so inconsistent. But yeah, uh, so I was following uh, the order of operations that that commenter had given me and it actually worked. It worked pretty well in my favor. So this is actually the first battle that came up and my first foray into trying to think with the tactical, you know, strategy in mind. And it definitely wasn't the... It, it wasn't as easy in my head as I wanted it to be, uh, but definitely taking some time to actually read what my skills do <laughs> and thoroughly understand them, uh, I started to kind of see some areas in which I had went wrong. I know I'm supposed to backstab, but backstabbing is obviously hard when the person, they just turn around automatically. Um, and, and this is, this first attempt is really me trying to play around more so with what I have available with me. Uh, but yeah, I, I, during this, I, I start testing out if, you know what, the below the belt and the deadly strike are supposed to give me increased buffs to continue hitting that person. And I know that I've kind of been using them as like hit below the belt on someone, move to the next person as like a debuff. And I think that was, uh, that was me going in the wrong direction. 
So I started to switch my strategy to stunning one person and then focusing on the other with the below the belt and the deadly strike so that I could get extra damage through armor and that they couldn't move as much. Um, and I started, I got closer than when I didn't, when I just was not using the tactical feature at all. So I felt pretty, you know, upbeat about it. I thought maybe this actually is a way for me to progress because that's really what I want to do. I don't care about dying 800 times. I just want to be able to progress eventually. Um, and I especially want to progress knowing that you guys are watching and don't want to just see me do the same fight 800 times. So this time I went and I tried this new strategy right from the get-go without having the disadvantage of starting out as a mouse and being in the corner. So I stunned one guy, would use below the belt, a deadly strike on the other, and I was just trying to get the one guy down so that then I could focus on just one-on-one -on -one combat. Because I feel pretty confident with one-on-one -on -one combat, at least with humanoids and people who can get stunned, because I can always, I always have backups of like being able to stun them and then I can get around and start doing that backstab thing. So this was really me getting into the groove of this whole tactical planning thing. And especially, I had to learn uh, the lyrium areas. Uh, okay, at first I thought there was only- they only use once, but I guess it's a timer thing. They come up after a certain amount of time, which is better. Uh, but yeah, I was totally under the impression I could only use them once. So that, that assumption probably hurt me a lot more than possible. But yeah, you can see that having actually learned tactics, I actually was able to get through a fight and then promptly die in a fire. But you know, you can't win them all. So the next thing I learned was the quick save feature, which I love. I love that there's a button I can press and it saves. And that's so elementary and I should have thought of that before. It's been in a hundred games <laughs> that I've played, but I just, it wasn't announced to me. So it totally didn't come to mind that that was a thing, but you will see a lot in this video. I start saving everything like i kill a dude save i find a treasure save i die in a fire save like so much saving but yes okay so this fight pretty similar to the last fight uh and i tried a similar strat i was just like i'll do it again go by the lyrium deposit so that i can uh you know click on it whenever i need to this is where i learned that the camera wants to fight me a lot just because I want 100% top down, that's really what I want from this mode. And if there's a button, please tell me because I will greatly appreciate it. But if not, then I'll just continue to struggle with the camera a little bit. Uh, it's not terribly bad, especially because you can pause it and fix it. But yeah, I was like, mm, I'm at this awkward angle that I really want it to just be top down. But that's okay. So yeah. Beating this battle, pretty similar, pretty annoying in that it just takes a long time to whittle these guys down. But you don't see it on my face, but I am so in the zone and I'm actually like enjoying, yep, yeah, right there, I'm enjoying my time uh, now, now that I feel like I have some sort of way to progress.
hopefully, like, by now you guys can kind of see the strategizing that I have... I was slowly putting into place, and hopefully will continue to put into place into future episodes. Uh, yeah, I just... It's nice to actually have a plan and to feel like I have a little bit more understanding of what I'm doing. Obviously, it's not much more than what I had before, but just being able to get through some of these fights that seemed impossible before uh, make me pretty excited because I want to like this game. I really do. I don't want to think of it as an impossible game. And it really isn't. I'm just not the kind of person who usually does these tactic games and so I tried to make it into a game it wasn't. I tried to make it into just a brutal RPG where I could just grind on stuff and get stronger. But now that I had some technical prowess it was time for the first quote unquote boss that I had faced. Uh, I was- I was- I immediately went to that <laughs> delirium deposit and I was going for it. Uh, I did not see that burn demon coming. And I have a feeling that that's- that's like a common theme in this game. It's just secret enemies that make things difficult. Uh, but yeah. First attempt did not go swimmingly. Especially because I was still under the impression there was only one use of that lyrium deposit so yeah i died uh but this time i was not deterred this time i was like i got some strategy on my side i have an idea or at least i had the beginnings of an idea so i just stunned the dude and i was like i'm just gonna go kill the demon he seems pretty easy to beat i got informed by a comment the same the same comment that was giving me the guy that the demons are easier than the real world forms. Little, little sad. <laughs> Definitely makes me feel like a like a loser. But you know, if it's true, it's true. They they do seem easier, and that just means I have to get smarter. I have to get more cunning, just like my character. But yes, this was a battle of attrition, and then I realized, oh, I'm still dying, and I don't only have the one health. But then I remembered the tried and true strat of being an absolute coward, and so I start running away. <laughs> and you know what? This is my favorite strat, and also this is where I learned that you can use Lyrium multiple times sometimes. I still don't know exactly what the time is, but I'm guessing it's on a timer. But yeah, I haven't I haven't changed that much. I still will uh, just cowardly run away as a boss strat, and I'm not afraid to say it. It's the best strat, running in circles when they can't chase you down. Um, <laughs> it also just makes for funny footage of just the anger fading. I am free. Take Ragos' power. Use it and burn him. Burn them all. He guards sloth. He bars the way. You must destroy the door. Other dreamers. Other powers. Only way. Well. Now I can go to the Burning Man concert. Yeah. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Burning Man isn't a concert, is it? Hmm. Yeah, I was pretty excited. And now I had Fireboy. And Fireboy changed this game from like a C experience to an A++ experience. I had so much fun being the burning dude, the burning man. Um, yeah, I got to throw fireballs. Who doesn't want to throw fireballs? 
So now that I had the Burning Man, I can move on to step two in the how to beat the fade guide. Um, and that was to go to the mage place with the bunch of mages, like the suicide mages are here. Uh, and the first thing I learned was that uh, Fireball has a cast time. Uh, and also uh, destroys things really, really quickly. I was really happy. Anyway, so I then proceeded to just break in doors and throw fireballs. Really, that became my MO for practically every battle. It did not always work out, but it became my MO. Uh, and I, I really liked that people just died immediately. That was pretty, pretty cool. I was pretty ecstatic about that. Um, I tried to get this thing, which I'm pretty sure I've already gotten, but I was I didn't remember it, so I was very confused. But yeah, basically, I was like, I'm gonna just be this burning god forever. Except for this suicide scene. Um, I'm so sorry for these mages. If only, if only we could have talked and they could have learned that I was gonna save them all from this nightmare realm. Uh, then maybe, maybe they could have survived. But either way, I was feeling pumped and I was feeling powerful. Which meant that, uh... Which meant that it was time to learn a lesson. I faced these servants uh, the, the servants that at first I was, uh, certain were, uh, spawning randomly behind me. Cause last time there was like, it felt like they just kept coming and then I died. I actually know now that it was just that there were three of them and one's, uh, invisible or something. He's stealth. But yeah, so I kill them. I feel pretty good about myself. I, uh enjoy my new look as a burning god and then I go into the next room this battle wasn't so bad I died but mostly it's because of this servant distracting me so that I took a bunch of free hits from these uh, rage demons um, I'm immune to fire, which is a saving grace. Being immune to fire is great. Um, <laughs> especially later on, it'll, it, it comes in clutch. Uh, but yeah, so I had to take out the servants another time. I have gotten better at fireball. I realized it not only has a casting time, uh, that people can move out of the distance for, um, but this time, I was ready for the secret servant, uh, and I was like, I'm going to trigger him before I face the rage demons. So, see guys, this- I want- I want to show you this footage, because I want to show you that I am in fact learning. I am in fact getting smarter and smarter. I am still very dumb when it comes to this game, but I am trying to be, uh, at least decent. Decent enough to get to the end. Uh, this was- this was a mistake. That- that- that right there, opening that door, that was a mistake. Uh, not only are there a bunch of mages, but two more rage demons come up. And, uh, I hadn't saved. My- I saved everywhere else but this. So, more fireball. I had to kill these poor servants. A third time, just to teach him a lesson. Uh, I didn't need to use fireball there, but I did because it's freaking fireball. Like, I'm not a wizard in D&D, &D, but you give a person fireball and they're gonna use fireball. Like, it's a giant ball of fire. What more could you want? This time. This time I remembered to save. And I was prepared for the second, uh, 
the second pair of rage demons. So this time I made quick work of the first ones and then I didn't go to the door and instead killed the second ones so then I could save afterwards and then face the mages on the other side of the door. Not gonna lie, these mages are prob were probably the hardest fight I had this session because I wanted to just fireball them uh, and it seemed like that was the answer but also they had ice abilities and I was weak to ice uh, very weak to ice and lightning and a lot of stuff this this form is brilliantly aggressive but it is also squishy I had thought maybe getting them to catch on fire would be helpful, but they seemed almost immune to it too. Um, I tried hiding behind the wall, uh, but it turns out their spells can kind of clip through the wall a bit, whereas mine can't because mine are more specialized. I tried running away to give myself more time. Uh, I had to contend with the new stamina magic, I guess, I guess my stamina was my magic, technically, in this case. Um, so I had to deal with that, which wasn't a big deal, I just, you know, it's the first time using magic, uh, so a lot of it was like, hmm, I can use this as long as it comes up, and then I couldn't, and it was taking a while, and... You know, like, I know it in my head, but putting into practice is a little bit different. But I did not let these mages deter me. I just kept throwing fireballs. I tried turning back into my normal self to not take extra cold damage. That did not seem to work. Uh, clearly, my Burning Man form was the ultimate form. Really, that's the form I would like to continue the rest of this game as, just... Uh, on fire demonic god of destruction I know that that's not going to happen but you know a girl can dream Finally, I had a pretty good, I guess, RNG. I, I can't say that I did anything particularly different. I still stayed at the door and then just blew people up. But I guess the damage numbers and stuff were on my side. So this time I was able to kill those mages, save, and then I saw that there were more mages. So I threw more fireballs at them because screw those mages. <laughs> we run around in circles for a little bit, um, but yeah, the finally beat the real true boss, a bunch of mages in a room with only one door between me and victory. Get some lyrium, heal up, and I was on my way uh, to the next room and to the uh, I guess the second second boss uh, 
First I had to get through these guys, and this is where something really fun happens. So I shoot a ball of fire because I'm like, oh, I'll catch them by surprise. They take no damage, uh, and then they start fighting me. So then they start taking damage. Uh, at least some of them do. I'm immune to all of their fire attacks, and then someone summons some god dang fire tornado. And I have no idea what's going on, but fortunately I'm immune to fire, so it doesn't matter that I don't know what's going on, because it can't hurt me. Which is when I decided that this <laughs> was- this was my true form, and any other form of myself is, uh, the subpar, less godly version. I go into the next room, and it's another boss fight. There's one guy who's, like, friendly. Um, bunch of mages, some weird stone golem things. But yeah, they go down pretty quickly. Thank you. It is time for this dream to come to an end. Woo! I give you my strength. It will be of little use against the demon that rules here, but perhaps it will help at other realms. Find a way to kill all the demon lords to open the way to sloth. Free us all from this nightmare! <laughs> oh no. I make a sick golem. Wow! So now I was, I, or at least I had the ability to become a stone golem. And I was feeling pretty proud of myself, not going to lie. I had unlocked two new forms that had seemed so impossible to get just weeks ago. Um, I now had the ability to blow people up with fire and rock. Uh, truly, I was at a good place. And then I got here, and I fought things, and true to form, uh, I end up just, at the very end, getting hit just a little too much from not being able to pre-plan the fight, because I didn't know there was going to be a fight immediately. But that's okay, I was feeling pretty good. Uh, now my deaths were learning experiences that meant I knew which, you know, I, I at least knew something to, to get better at and uh, prepare more appropriately for the battle. These stone guys, they're pretty cool. Um, they don't take as much damage as I would like from like a fireball, but hey, fireball can't kill everything. So instead I threw a rock. And it killed everything. Part of me, I knew that the next step on the list uh, was to go to one of the either one of the other two areas of the fade that had been originally unlocked. Uh, but I was curious. I wanted to explore, and I was told also that there were lots of cool stuff just hanging around in the fade. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do that. I wanted to get all the cool stuff. So I went adventuring in this upper corridor maze place. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just gonna go beat up some dudes, try this new stone form, uh, kill lots of stuff. Really, that was the entire plan. Uh, I, like, <laughs> beyond getting the forms, I have no idea what I'm s supposed to do in the Fade. Uh, I know I'm supposed to find my friends, but I don't know really where they are. But now that I felt like I had, I had two pieces of the puzzle, you know, I had the ability to open up those locked doors, and I had the ability to walk through flames, I was fairly pretty good about the exploration bit. Now I can explore places that I didn't explore before, and I could, you know, hopefully get more party members or find the last form and get more spirit stuff. It seemed like things were- I was finally making enough progress and, you know, I was excited about that. It clearly shows on my face the excitement. Uh, but yes, I was actually really excited 
that I was making so much progress. And also that I could like knock out enemies in one hit. You know, you take that for granted when you're like super strong and you, you're like a level 20 character and you can just like knock people out really easily. And then you start a game over and you really suck and everything's hard. <laughs> so I was just enjoying the feeling that I was accomplished as a fighter. I guess is the best way to put it. This way was a dead end. I was a little bit confused and sad about that, but whatever. I killed two mages just because. It's great experience points. Every we still get experience experience points still matter, right? So I went to this door and I was going to toss more stuff in, kill more things, but then I didn't see them. But I did see a magical uh, stat point buff, and that made me super happy because uh, any way to increase my character's abilities to become the ultimate uh, killing machine is a win in my book. I love how. <laughs> I love how the golems go down. They look so funny. They just like fall over on their faces. Got some willpower. Saving the game. More golems to fight. Oh, really? <laughs> golem on golem action. And now it was time for this room. This room, uh, I was like, hey, I'll just make my way in it and it'll be great. And then I died. <laughs> really quickly with my favorite friends, the arcane horrors, I think is what they're called. Uh, they're, they're, they're my favorites. I always have a fun time when they're around. So I went to the tried and true method of uh, setting things on fire, tried to time it, and uh, oh my gosh, did they die. <laughs> I did not expect them to die so quickly, but they did. And then I found this guy, this random guy, he was in this weird room, his name was like, Slavin. I don't know who Slavin is, he didn't seem to be a very happy guy, um, I tried to talk to him, but uh, he didn't seem that interested in talking, so I just killed him. And uh, then I found another Fade Portal thingy. And it looked like, oh, Slavin might have been important. <laughs> so that gave me the idea that, hey, maybe that's what I've been supposed to do this entire time. So I went to the next place. Uh, to find the last form. Uh, found these guys again, forgot all about them and their stupid fire trap, but this time I am the fire, so they died pretty quickly. And I just walked through their pity fire traps with ease. Uh, went through the fade portals, realized that the fade portals just sent me back to the start over and over again uh so clearly i was in the wrong area since i killed everything and wasn't able to progress and i made my way to the templar area and that's actually where i stopped and so that's it that's that's where i stopped and that's where you'll find me in the future on the next episode. I hope that this was a decent enough, uh, a, a decent enough fixing of past mistakes that I was able to show you guys the, uh, progression and I was able to at least become a little less infuriating to watch. Um, hopefully that sticks. But yeah, next episode I'll be totally regular, normal, uh, Gale. Just doing it like I do all the other episodes live and entertaining. And hopefully 
we get through this game a little bit easier, a little bit smoother. So anyway, thank you for watching this weird amalgamation voiceover episode, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.